All right, we're gonna go ahead and work with constructing frequency tables and histograms with grouped data. So now we're thinking about lower limits, that kind of thing. Um, so we're gonna first start with our list of numbers. Now mine are already least to greatest because um, I, I did that already. But if you need to, right, highlight your data and um, sort smallest to, to largest and poof, it will sort for you. Um, now if you recall, when we're talking about group uh, data, we need class um, limits. Uh, ooh, sorry, this would be a lower limit and an upper limit. Now, if you've watched a past video of mine, we've talked about those upper limits in terms of uh, like bins, is I think is what we called them. So the upper limit of an interval is a bin. So I'm going to go ahead and say, because my smallest number is 315, I want my lower limit of my first bin or class to be 300. And I'm going to go by... Boop, 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 boop. Let's go by 100s. So my class width will be 100. And now thinking about this, I need uh, the, the upper limit, which is the, the bin, right? That's what we're going to be using, will be one less than the, uh, the lower limit of the next piece, right? So 399, 499, 599, 699. Whoops. Typing numbers are important. 899, 999. Now, stop. Notice that my biggest number is 996. So I actually don't need this last one because 996 falls in this piece. So you want your smallest number to fit in your first interval and your biggest number to fit in your last interval. That is the goal. So now, um, if we want to do this, I'm going to hit my data button. I'm going to go to my data analysis and I'm going to choose histogram. Now this is going to create some nice things for me here. I want my input range to go from A2 all the way to A23. So you can see that it did A2 to A23. For my bins, my bins are not in B, right? My bins are D2 to D8. I want a new worksheet and I want this to be a chart output. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Okay, and this creates, so you'll notice um, it's given me the bins and the frequency. I don't know what this more thing is. It's kind of confusing, but there you can see my histogram. Now, this is not my favorite histogram, but if I would insert um, a piece to the left, I could do my lower class inter, I can't type tonight, my lower class intervals, and I would then have my frequency table for this. Now, one thing I also want to point out is that because we are, um, I have an updated version of Excel. I can highlight this data and go to um, insert. And if you look at all of my graphs up here, this pretty one that has like blue lines, that's a histogram. And I can just click on that. Now, we know that we shouldn't just have, in this case, three bars, which is three intervals. But if I double click, I double clicked on those bars, you can see, look at this, it says bins. Right now it's auto generated. But if I click on that, I can go by category, I can go by bin width. So if I want the bin width to be 150, it will auto generate to that. If I want the bin width, right? So I'm talking like the, the late the width of the of the interval, I can change that. And you can see it auto generates and it shows me the numbers at the bottom. So it gives me those uh, the, the interval, the lower limit and the upper limit, and then the frequency is the height of the bar. So it's not necessarily a frequency table. You would have to take the data out of this, but the histogram gives you that information. Now, I have failed to do this in previous, but we should give this guy um, oh, history of amazing. Um, you should give your, your histograms, your graphs a title. But anyway, um, so that I think is the easiest way to do it if you have an updated version of Excel. And in my experience, right, this is what histograms are supposed to look like, the bars are supposed to touch. Um, because we're talking about quantitative data that is continuous. Um, whereas this, uh, we would have to, we would have to change this gap width. Okay, so in this previously made by the data analysis tool, if I double click on the bars, it brings up the data points over here. If I change the gap width to zero, which I did not do in an earlier video, it does make the bars touch, which is what we want it to look like. So it does give you a little bit more. Um, it just kind of depends, one, on what version of Excel you're working in. 
and uh, how much work you want to put into that. But that's the basics of making a histogram with grouped data.